Hello sim racers and welcome back to the fixed setup oval racing guide. We'll be covering week 3 of season 1 which runs from December 28th through January 4th. I hope that Talladega wasn't too destructive to your I rating and safety rating last week, but if it was, worry not. We're getting back to some standard mile and a half ovals this week and you'll have a great opportunity to make up what you lost. For those of you who like to turn left and right, you're in luck. There are two road course races to tackle this week, and I've brought on a road course ringer, Graham Sanders, to help me out. Graham is a talented road racer in iRacing, and it can be found streaming on Twitch, linked down in the pinned comment below. I highly recommend you check out his content if you want to learn how to become a better road racer. Thank you for your help, Graham. I couldn't have done this without you. As with any skill-based activity, your mileage may vary with the information shared in this video. Sim racing requires individual effort in order to improve and simply watching a video will not make you a better sim racer. These episodes are recorded before the week begins, so the guided qualifying lap should not be viewed as the gold standard for what the best lap time to achieve is. Treat this information simply as a starting point for your own practice routine. Any analysis or commentary that I provide comes from my own experience in iRacing and may not always directly translate to what happens to you. I'm human, I make mistakes, and I can be wrong. I try my best to avoid errors and misinformation, but if I do make a mistake in these videos, you have my apology in advance. The Arkham Menard series heads to Sonoma Raceway for what I can only imagine will be an entertaining experience, if nothing else. The race is 15 laps and takes place at 2.20 p.m. in Sim. There's not a whole lot that I can tell you other than the best thing that you can focus on doing is keeping your car on the track. If you can manage to do that, you're probably going to walk away with a pretty good finish as most people will struggle to run a clean lap consistently and running wide, running off the track will be entirely commonplace. Remember, as of this season, I rating and safety rating are track type specific. So the split that you end up racing in will be determined by your road I rating, not oval. Depending on your situation, be ready to take on an entirely different group of racers than you may otherwise see on the oval side. Unfortunately, I don't have a lap to show you because the lap that Graham recorded for me was on the cup layout, which is what I told him to run based on what iRacing had put as the layout on the series schedule page. Literally says Sonoma Raceway Cup. However, looking at the series sessions for official racing, it says that the layout being used is Cup Historic, a different layout. So unfortunately, the lap that Graham turned uh, is not representative of what you're going to see this week. So we're just going to have to leave that part out. But everything else still remains true. So sorry, no lap, best of luck, and uh, thanks iRacing. Nah, just kidding, they're okay. You will give yourself a better chance of success if you can keep your car on track each lap and not have any off-road excursions. That should be your top priority if you're doing these races. There will be people who have better pace than you, but don't let that lure you into overdriving and going off the track. One mistake can cost you a ton of time, and with no cautions, you won't make it up. Be patient, race the track, and capitalize on other people's mistakes. Those are the keys to success for ARCA at Sonoma. C-Fixed is at Chicagoland Speedway, a 1.5 mile track that features a unique back straight that is actually slightly curved. This race is 40 laps and takes place at noon in Sim. As normally seen at a track this size, blocking will play a major role in maintaining your track position and not giving up the bottom, so be prepared for aggressive racing and wrecks, particularly on the initial start and any restarts while the field is bunched up. Qualifying is a pretty straightforward process this week. Hold the throttle to the floor all the way around the track and turn the wheel as little as necessary. 
What will separate you from the rest of your competition is your ability to hit the right line and minimize how much speed you scrub through the turns. Cut the front straightaway coming to start your timed lap and use that start finish line as your guide for when you should be right next to the grass. Once you pass the start finish line, let the truck go straight so it blends back up onto the track before the red mark on the outside wall. You should be about halfway up the racetrack by the time you reach this mark. My turn in point for turn one is just past the irregular patch on the catch fence. Arc the truck towards the bottom of the track, getting that left front tire as close as possible to the white line. Ideally, you will reach the white line at the apex of the turn. On my lap, I miss the bottom by just a little bit and that cost me some time, so do the best you can to get as close to that white line as possible. Let the truck drift out towards the wall coming out of two, but don't let it go out there all the way. Instead, use the top seam as your guide and follow that all the way down the backstretch. Since this part of the track isn't straight, staying away from the wall is actually the shorter way around and you can gain a little bit of time on your lap as long as you follow that seam. My turn in point for turn three is the last caution light coming out of the catch fence. At this end of the track, you will make or break your lap time. So be smooth with the steering wheel to get the truck to the bottom. And once again, scrape the white line with your left front tire at the apex. Keep a tight line coming out of turn four using the top seam as a maximum range to touch on exit and then set up and cut that front stretch just like you did coming to start the lap. My lap time was a 30.95. For this race, I will be using a 16 to one steering ratio and 62% brake bias. Over the course of a 10 lap solo run, my right rear tire wore slightly more than my right front, but I could definitely feel the loss of rear grip, especially in turns three and four. While I was able to stay full throttle for the entire run, that won't be the case when you're in the pack, so plan on dragging that brake pedal on corner entry in order to save the right front tire. Going too wide into turn three can get a bit dicey, and it's very common to see the bottom truck take too shallow of an entry, bounce off the apron, and wash up the track, making contact with that outside truck. Be mindful when you are in this situation because it happens so often, especially as the tires wear and grip drops off. Remember, blocking and using the apron on the front straightaway will absolutely be a part of racing C-Fix this week. Anticipate those types of moves and you may avoid a wreck before it even happens. Be fixed goes to NASCAR's backyard, Charlotte Motor Speedway for its first mile and a half race of the season. This race is 45 laps and takes place at noon in Sim. While Charlotte is a track that everyone on the service got exposed to as a rookie, it's still a tricky place to navigate and will absolutely punish drivers who abuse their tires. Throttle discipline is critical for putting down a good qualifying lap as the setup starts off with very little rear grip available. You may want to use the first lap to build heat in the tires and then go all out on lap two. While my second lap wasn't much faster, it did feel more stable and I know I left some time on the table. As you start your lap, try to point the car for as straight of a run through the dog legs as possible and then aim the right front of the car for the red Coca-Cola sign on the outside wall. Carry the throttle until you're about to land in the banking of turn one and pull the car towards the blue line. Apply enough throttle to build speed, but keep the car on the blue line as long as you can. Look for that same red Coca-Cola sign at the exit of turn two and aim the car for that as you arc out of the turn. Hold the wall down the back stretch and look for the Charlotte USA text on the outside wall as your turn in point. Hold the throttle until the white line that goes across the track. Coast the car to the blue line and apply enough throttle to again build speed, but stay on the blue line until about three quarters of the way through the turn. Let the car drift up towards the outside wall 
and cut the first dogleg as close as possible without getting an off-track penalty. The car will definitely feel a little unsettled on corner exit under full throttle, so be prepared to counter this with steering wheel input. But remember, the most important thing to a good lap is keeping the car on the blue line through the turns. Coming up off the bottom will definitely hurt your lap time. My lap time was a 30.42 on this run, but my optimal lap time was in the three, so I know I can do better. For my 10 lap solo run, I used a 16 to one steering ratio and set the brake bias to 60%. My right rear tire was worn 2% more than my right front, but the car felt fairly neutral throughout the run. I did notice towards the end of the run that the car felt a bit snug in the center of the corner, especially in turns three and four. So being patient with the throttle is critical to keeping good pace. Getting back to full throttle too soon will shred your tires and take you off that all important bottom groove. Be careful when setting up for turn one as it's really easy to let the car arc out too far and brush the wall before the entry point. This damage model is very unforgiving and you will lose a ton of performance with a crinkled race car. The entry to turn three may have the biggest impact on tire wear and I recommend taking a more shallow entry in order to ensure you get to that blue line every time. It's harder on the tires to pull the car to the bottom than it is to simply point it there with a more shallow entry. A Fixed heads to upstate New York and historic Watkins Glen International. This race is 20 laps, has local enforced yellow flags, and takes place around 1.30 p.m. in Sim. Just like with Arca, priority number one for you should be to keep the car on the track. Watkins Glen is a high-speed road course with very few places for runoff, so a mistake here typically won't end with just a harmless trip through the dirt, but rather a hard crash into the guardrails. The Cup Series car is very challenging to drive around here, so let's bring in Graham once more to show us what a lap looks like. I'm going to let the lap do most of the talking here, but I will highlight a few things that caught my attention along the way, such as braking points. Turn one is extremely tricky because it's a downhill approach into the slowest corner on the entire circuit. It's very easy to overdrive turn one and wheel hop or lock up the rear tires and lose control. Graham begins braking just before the caution light on the left-hand side of the track. So use this as your point of reference. Notice that he does the majority of his braking in a straight line and is already letting off the brakes by the time he turns in. The S's are absolutely treacherous and the left-hander at the top of the hill is slower than you think. Be patient with the throttle and expect to have to put in a lot of wheel input to keep the car pointed in the right direction as you struggle for rear grip. Get to high gear as soon as you can to minimize wheel spin and blast down the straightaway towards the inner loop. Graham's braking point is the 600 board, but you may need to brake earlier depending on your comfort level. Again, notice he is done braking before he even turns in. You want to avoid braking and turning at the same time on road courses. Attack the curbs through the inner loop, but beware that the car can become unsettled if you don't hit them correctly. It's a risk reward thing. Keep a tidy line through the right hand sweeper that has you getting closer to the inside curb as you progress through the turn. This will set you up for the best exit possible but don't drift out too far. There's very little runoff here, so if you get it wrong, you're gonna be out in the grass or are at risk of spinning. The next breaking point is the concrete blocks that are found on either side of the track. Carry partial throttle and prepare for the final turn, breaking just before the end of the tire barriers on the left-hand side of the track. Stay off the inner curb and carefully get back to full throttle to complete the lap. Oh, what a ride. Thank you, Graham, for doing this because there was no way that I was going to be able to. Graham's best lap time was a 1 minute 11.944. That's a hell of a lot better than I was going to be able to do. The advice I gave for Arca rings true here for A-Fixed with the additional warning of the bigger penalty for a mistake. 
Focus on putting together a clean lap before you worry about battling other drivers. It's very easy to overdrive this track, miss your braking points, and either plow into the car ahead of you or into the guardrails. Patience and disciplined pedal technique will be your best friends if you tackle Watkins Glen this week. Two mile and a half, two road courses, and a lot of fun to be had this week. If you're someone who enjoys a bit more technical driving, this might be a week that you find a lot of success. However, if you're not comfortable on road courses, you might want to put in some extra practice before you jump into one of those races. But hey, at least if you don't do well now, it won't tank your oval eye rating. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found the information to be educational, but most importantly, helpful. And if you did, please help me out by rating and especially sharing this video so that we can bring this information to more iRacers. If you want to see more iRacing content similar to this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on so that you never miss an episode. Additionally, you can catch me doing plenty of fixed setup oval racing on my Twitch channel, link down in the description below. If you want to get in touch with me, the best way to do that is follow me on Twitter, also linked down in the description below. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and have a great week of racing.